Hello again. In this video we're going to talk about oil paints and if you're new to oil painting then you might be a bit confused about which brand do you buy and, um, and, and what are the benefits of one over the other. So I'm just going to look at a range of oil paints today and, um, and, and just discuss something about, uh, about oil paints. Uh, and which ones that you could use for a basic um, uh, palette. In fact, the next video I'll do is is choosing which oil paints you would use to, to, for a basic palette that will cover all kinds of, of different um, types of painting. But in this one, we're just gonna talk about the different types of oil paints. There are different brands then. Okay, so we've got, um, I tend to use because we do use, I go through quite a lot of paint. I'll go for the bigger tubes like this. These tubes are 200 milliliters. Um, this one's done, is made by PBO, which is actually a very good brand. It's one of the better, more budget brands, but it is still a very good brand of paint. Um, they've got some lovely colors. Um, this one is vivid pink, but they still have um, the standard colors that you're going to be used, like um, cadmium red and cobalt blue, etc. Um, and uh, so that, that that's a very good um, budget brand to have. Um, you can also have De La Roni. Uh, these are Georgian paints by De La Roni. Um, very good brand again. Um, you will find though between the different ones uh, that there's a slight difference in hue between one uh, brand of paint and the other. Um, though I might say it's cadmium red and the other, and they're both labeled as cadmium red, you might see a slight difference in the, in the color hue, depending on how much pigment that they put in their, in their, in their mix. Um, so if you are starting a painting and, you, uh, and you've uh, a low on one paint, do try to get the same uh, brand to, for continuity. Um, uh, that's a bit, that can be a little bit of an issue, but otherwise, um, then you're, you're, you're fine with the more budget paints. Winsor & Newton do a student um, brand called Winton, and they're very good paints as well. Winsor & Newton obviously um, also have a professional brand paint, but are very much more expensive. Um, hence, I've only got the small tubes of them because uh, these, these tubes can be um, sometimes three times the price of a small tube in the student range. So there is a, there's a budgetary constraint there you need to think about with the student uh, quality and the professional quality. The professional quality difference is it has more pigment in it. Um, so the colors are much deeper and richer. But um, really for, for starting off painting, then you can quite easily stick with the, um, the student brands, the De La Ronis and the PBOs, and you'll get a very good result just from the, using those, those three. Um, you've also got then the uh, uh, more specialist brands like Michael Harding for distance. This is the handmade oil colors that he does beautiful colors and very dense in their in their intensity but again they're expensive so you need to have a to uh, to keep an eye on your budget there um, then you've also got paint pigments you can make up your own paints um, with using paint pigments uh, and you can get the the um, the pigment powder and then mix up your own paints I'll just ex I'll explain something about that in a second. Um, you've also got then um, fast drying oil colors. Uh, these are um, again by Winsor & Newton. Uh, they're the Griffin Alkyd oils, uh, which have, rather than having a linseed oil binder, which the standard paints would have with the pigment, they have a resin binder, which is a mixture of acid and alcohol, uh, which means that they dry very, very fast. Um, it's the kind of the step between um, uh, acrylic paints and oil paints, if you like. Uh, so the, the, if you like the fast drying qualities of acrylics, uh, but you want to do a little bit of blending, but you don't want to wait for the, the, the oil paints to dry too slowly for you, then you can use these alkyd oils, which will dry in um, 24, uh, 36 hours, they'll be dry. Um, but they are 
um, they're not, they don't flow quite as easily as the linseed, the ones with the linseed oil, the standard paints, and they do tend to be quite sticky. Um, so you don't get quite the best uh, uh, blending results as you would with the standard oils, but at least you don't have to wait for the oils to dry so, um, so long as with the, uh, with the standard oils. Um, you can add, um, with use, the, use the standard oils, but instead of using a linseed oil as part of your medium, linseed oil and, and, um, and sansador as your medium, and I spoke, I spoke about mediums in the previous uh, video, so if you want to just um, revise, um, you know, catch, catch up on that one, you can have a look. If you wanted to, to, uh, to substitute um, uh, a faster drying medium, then you could add to your standard oils, you could add um, an alkyd uh, um, bind, uh, binder, bi uh, uh, a drying agent. You can ha you can add a, um, a faster dry uh, agent, so you could you could do that. Um, so those are the fast drying oils, um, and I will do demonstrations on all of these in other videos, so you can have a look at those. This is just a kind of an overview. I want to talk a little bit on toxicity of oil paints. Um, it is a um, a common misconception that oil paints are, oil painting is dangerous and toxic, environmentally hazardous and a danger to your health. And that was true at one time, but um, uh, going back into the, the early 15th century, when oil paints first were uh, invented by the Flemish artists, um, they were mixing up their own pigments and mixing up their own oils and the pigments that they were using were toxic. Um, uh, pigments such as cadmium, vermilion, uh, lead uh, and the cobalt compounds um, like of cobalt arsenate for example, very toxic. Um, but nowadays the, um, the modern materials and methods have mitigated many of these hazards and today oil painting is one of the safest painting um, mediums to use. Um, but having said that, you still need to bear in mind that you are still using those small amounts of these, these, uh, these, these toxic materials, you are still using them. So if you have, if you're have um, any kind of broken skin on your hands or anything like that, you do need to think about wearing gloves if you are um, going to be painting with oils. Um, none of the tubes carry any, uh, as they used to do years ago, they used to have a government health warning. You don't have anything like that anymore um, because the pigment quantity is a, lot, uh, is a lot less than it used to be. Uh, and also the, the way that they are using the, uh, the pigments now, uh, or as opposed to years ago, the pigment powder was very, very fine. Um, and nowadays the pigment that is used is ground to a much coarser um, uh, level, which can't then be absorbed through the skin. Uh, so there's a different method now of make, making up paints to, to what it used to be years ago. So you can be safe um, that um, oil painting, as long as you are sensible, um, you're not going to be um, uh, putting yourself in any kind of danger. Uh, the, the, so the, 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 the toxic compounds that you'll hear about would be, uh, as I said, the cadmiums used in cadmium yellow and cadmium red. It's a cadmium sulfide. Um, the pigment, which is not really, it was not considered to be um, uh, to be a dangerous pig, uh, 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 toxic pigment, especially in the quantities that it's used. Vermilion red, okay, slightly more. That's merc mercurial sulfide, so that is um, that is more toxic. But again, smaller quantities that are used in it. Um, avoid that colour if you're at all worried, and use a different red instead. Flake white I would avoid because that uses lead carbonate. So I don't tend to use flake white. Use titanium white instead, which is what this one is. Um, it's it's it's, um, it's less less toxic and um, it's uh, uh, it's it's an, it's actually a nicer white anyway. It's a much more opaque white than flake white. The cobalt blues and the cerulean blues they use cobalt compounds. 
Um, and the cobalt violet, as I said, uses cobalt arsenate, which uh, um, again is, is one of the toxic um, uh, components that you hear about. But as I said, it's modern materials and the modern methods have mitigated uh, many of the hazards um, uh, previously associated with um, oil painting, so you don't need to worry. If you are making up your own pigments and you buy pigment powder, that's when you do need to be take more care. Uh, because obviously then you are working with, um, with the powder itself uh, and it is very fine, fine powder. So you do need to be a little bit more careful with that. So when, if you are going to be making up your own pigments, uh, making up your own paints, you can buy natural pigments. Well, these are natural pigments anyway, but you can find, buy non-toxic ones. Um, but if you are going to use that, do that at all, then gloves. Gloves you'll need, a well-ventilated room, and even maybe a face mask because the powder is, is, is fine. So you, you um, perhaps need to take a little bit more care in making up um, your own paints. I'll do another video on um, making your own paints. Um, as an, uh, another video. Um, uh, but it's just something to be aware of when you're doing that. One of the mediums that you can use with any of your paints here that I didn't mention previously is um, an impasto medium um, which comes in a tube like this and you just add that to your to your paints and then you can uh, it's it retains and as it dries and it retains the uh, um, the peaks and troughs if you like it's rather like um, icing a cake with kind of uh, um, uh, the old-fashioned cakes that my mother used to make with the peaks and troughs of troughs of the icing or the snow scene that you kind of get that effect with uh, with oil medium so you can add a, tube, a little tube of that to any of your oil paints and that will you'll get that kind of result um, when you've mixed up your colors and mixing up colors and I'll do a video uh, separate videos on mixing colors um, you can see those separately um, then you that perhaps will take you an awful long time to to uh, to master is, uh, is mixing up colors and so uh, if you have spent quite a lot of time mixing a particular color you want to be able to save it um, so that if you're uh, if you have, don't have time to finish your painting, rather than when you come back to it, you have to spend um, an equal amount of time mixing up the same colour again. You want to be able to save some of that paint. Now, though paint oil paint does take a long time to dry, um, as I said before, the lower, the, the upper level, the layer of the paint will form a, a kind of a crust film. Um, and so you, you, you want to reduce that as if at all possible. So what, you, what a, good, uh, pr uh, um, a good practice is to s scoop up any of the paint, unused paint, and get yourself a little um, pill box or a, uh, a plastic um, container like this, and you can save some of your paints in the, um, in the box uh, and close the lid and the air, stopping the air getting at it. That's the key thing is stopping the air getting at your paints, um, which will, which will uh, um, stop them from drying out. Now put that container in your fridge or your freezer and you'll slow the drying time down even more. If you were not going to come back to your painting for, say, um, um, a week or, or a little longer, then the other thing that you can do is put that unused paint under water. So if you've got a little box um, like this one, for example, and you've got unused paint in it, fill the box then with water, uh, obviously close your lid, and the water then will stop, obviously stop the air getting at the paint. And it's that that's going to be drying out your paint. And obviously water and, uh, and oils don't mix. So when you're ready to, to, uh, to start painting again, you just simply pour off the water and you've got your fresh paint uh, left behind. Um, so that's a fantastic way of, of retaining your and keeping hold of your paints once you've mixed them all up. Um, so uh, there you go, a little bit about oil paints. In the next video, I'll look at a basic color palette um, that you need to start off your painting.